Welcome back to Everyday Economics, the podcast that helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, CEO of the 501c3 nonprofit, nonpartisan Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics, the production of America's Talking Network. You can subscribe to all of our podcasts at americastalking.com. To support Everyday Economics, please make your tax-deductible charitable contribution by clicking the link in the show description. We are recording today's episode on Friday, March 22nd, and joining me as always, my friend, my colleague, the ubiquitous Dr. Orfe Divangi, PhD economist. Dr. O, uh, you are something of a crystal ball gazer. I think you might be part medium, whereas I am XXL. You, you're absolutely medium. You're funny, man. You know, uh, the, a couple of things that you, that you, that you put out there, um, in a LinkedIn post, uh, earlier this week. And if you're not following Dr. O, Dr. Orfe Divangi on LinkedIn, then you're missing out because he's one of the most prolific posters of valuable stuff and that, that was my pulled, sunday sunday night post uh, he pulls you just pull stuff in from all over the place i think you do a really really good job of of, ma- of making sense of in particular of market data and and within the sector where you i think spend most of your time and most of most of your thinking time you know around housing i mean you 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 do some very very thoughtful stuff let me tee you up here to take uh, something of a victory lap because I mean you're call you're calling some shots and those shots are are coming in in spite of very high you know relative to 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 you know to recent years very high mortgage rates and in spite of inflation and in spite of turmoil inside of you know the the job world I mean you know the job numbers and the way that they get reported on employment etc I will tell you, you know, the the average person, you know, today is is walking on eggshells around their employment more so than 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 they were in in any Two of the years ago. previous yeah. years. Yes, for, yes, for sure, right? In spite of that, the housing market is moving pretty nicely. Um we're back but, to seeing in some see. in some markets, we're back to seeing competitive bidding. Yeah. For sure. Um and and it I mean it's a new sales season and the inventory certainly has improved. Um, in some markets, there's the, the inventory is, seems flush. I mean, if you're looking at like at South Florida in particular, you no, know, I think there's a lot of people that bought homes during COVID and and now they're like, man, maybe I don't need that extra home, or that extra expense. And you know, you, we're seeing some markets where there's, you know, the activity seems to be driven by personal economic circumstances. You know, not not the economy as a whole. That's right. But for the most part, I mean, the housing market is 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 chugging along in a way that I think a lot of people, you know, who just are trying to make sense of it, don't comprehend. So, um, why don't you why don't you kind of go through some of the things that you've that you've called out recently that that are uh, that are that are coming to fruition. Well, well, first of all, you know, it's been almost two years now since I said, Hey, don't, don't wait. Uh, don't hold your breath for house prices to come tumbling down. And, uh, and sure enough, we did not see the price declines that all the pundits had, uh, had called for, right? Uh, we didn't, we saw a slowdown in sales in the housing market. And, uh, and I think that was, uh, you know, quite troubling, I, I would say, you know, because basically what we learned is that sellers, it's the sellers with low interest rates would not want to sell their homes. And, you know, but ultimately, look, 13 million Americans move every year. And like you said, I think a lot of people are starting to move, not just, uh, you know, they're not just looking at the budget constraint, which includes their mortgage, their mortgage payments. They're also looking at like, you know, Hey, I've been sitting in this house for two or three years now, wanting to move. I waited. Mortgage is not coming down. Uh, I have a growing family. Uh, and I need to move. Like, you know, I have a new kid and we need an extra bedroom and we need this and we need that. And uh, look, my neighbor has a 2.2% mortgage rate, something like that. And. You know, his, he tells me, Hey, you know, there's this house. I want to have more space. My wife wants to move. And that's like, okay. Well, you know, can I give up my 2.2% mortgage rate? Right. Believe it or not, some people are doing it. It's one heck and of a trade. It's one heck of a trade off right now. It's one heck of a trade off. Sure. But, but some people are doing it because of those life events, you know, marriage, divorce, kids. 
And it, but then, but then there's also a lot of people, believe it or not, who own their home outright. They're mortgage debt free. If I'm debt free, I have a little bit more flexibility. In fact, uh, sneak peek of my next, uh, my next article is that basically the metros with the most mortgage debt free house homeowners have seen the biggest rise in new listings and the flow of homes coming on the market. That's coming soon only on zillow.com forward slash research. Mm-hmm. I, I just plug that in here. I, I noticed yeah, that. But, Good but, plug. <laughs> but, but yeah, but basically look, you know, despite the higher mortgage rates, you have demographic factors. You have inf- a, r- a rise in inflation adjusted incomes and wealth, financial wealth. I mean, the stock market keeps hitting new highs every time I, I, I look. And all of those are supportive of housing demand. Uh, so that on the demand side, you have that. On the supply side, you have all of the factors that I mentioned. And that is causing a moderate rebound in Housing sales. And, and we saw that. I mean, look, this, this past, uh, week, existing home sales increased 9.5% in February. Those are the data that came out of the National Association of Realtors. Uh, and yes, they're still down from a year ago, but they're rising again. They're coming back. Uh, we're seeing that in the zero data as well. 20% increase in new listings in February. New listings are now the, 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 the flow of homes coming on the market now up 21% from a year, from a year ago. And housing inventory is up 12% from last year, according to Zillow data. So you're seeing an increase in people wanting to sell their homes. You have factors that support demand and the combination of the two have co- are causing sales to increase. Of course, it's also the spring home shopping season. The start right. of the spring home shopping season. And so. You're going to have that activity, uh, in the housing market. And, and hold on. And one more thing, because I think you started the episode by saying, Hey, people are not confident about their job. Look, I think consumer confidence is increasing and, and you're, you're in a better place today where the unemployment rate is 3.9% than you were before the pandemic. I think that's important to say. Because at a 3.9% unemployment rate, most people lose their job and find it again within a couple of months at most, right? Uh, the conditions, it, they might not be as good as they were in 2021, but they're much better than we've ever had them, uh, for an American worker today. We have more bargaining power than we've ever had before. Uh, and, uh, and so I think that's helpful. Uh, for the housing market, for the overall economy. Well, I, I mean, I can only tell you what I know. I mean, and uh, I, I mean, and you know, with regard to you know the, the the people that I spend time with, you know, who are either you know in the job market and the or, you know or looking for a house, two very separate categories. The, I would say this: the the people that are in the job market who have a job uh, are. I think they're working a lot harder and, and that, and that they're proving their value or trying to prove their value in the work that they're doing. That's one. Two, on the, on the housing side, um, you know, in the last couple of, uh, weeks, I've been surprised by the number of homes that have come available on the market. And simply from an observational standpoint, like, you know, walking my, my dog or, or whatever, I'm seeing people going and looking at these homes and, yes. and that's, that, and that so it's so that there is activity out there. I think perhaps that we've become comfortable, uh, not necessarily all right with, but comfortable with the idea of mortgage rates, you know, being what they are. And that's just a, a factor of the moment. And it's not Chris, preventing let me ask people. You a I, I, I compare the season we're in with the 1990s, right? Higher productivity growth, higher real GDP growth, higher interest rates. I mean, the, do you remember the '90s, Chris? I remember the end of the '90s in particular when the well, do, yeah, when the when the, do, the dot com sure, bubble burst. Yeah, sure, I absolutely. Sure. Do. And then we had a tiny, and then we had what I call a tiny little recession. Yeah, okay, we, we had a little bit. Of, we had a little bit of uh, of a downturn, but then we enjoyed a fantastic decade. Right. Uh, we had we had uh, a nice we had a nice run from nineteen. 
from from 2000 to 2007 and then 2008 uh there was something else that 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 happened sure but uh, 2008 is completely not uh, not not synonymous today not i mean not comparable not comparable today that was largely driven by bad products and there's a reason we called it the great recession right right uh it, it it not comparable at all i think I think if you want to compare this period to any other period, you know, you you would say, look, we're entering a decade of potentially, uh, you know, uh, a great time to be a, to to be living in America. If inflation continues to come down, which, by the way, if you if you talk to serious economists, they're all saying they're they're all saying what I'm saying, which is they're revising their forecast for soft landing up. In other mm-hmm. words, we the probability that we're going to avoid a recession and that we're going to keep humming with inflation coming down has gone up. Uh, you know, and, and look, we, you see it in the data. The Fed revises estimates for real GDP higher. Slower, slower disinflation means the probability that we're going to end up in a crash has probably gone down. Is right? People have the power to continue to consume, to, and so they continue to to do so. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this, we're, the economy, the U.S. economy is going into a period where if we continue to move in that direction and inflation continues to tick lower, uh, with productivity growth surprising like it has, you know, we could have an amazing decade coming right up. Uh, I, and, and so that's what I feel great. That's what I feel great about. If we can keep the unemployment rate sub 4%, Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a big win. That's a huge win. Uh, so yeah, where, where would you like to be in the, uh, for the next 10 years? Right here in America. And that's probably where we're seeing these huge immigration flows, right? Uh, it's a great place to be right now. Uh, so, so yeah. So housing market, labor market, you start to see that recovery in the housing market the, in, in terms of sales. Uh, some people are still somewhat pessimistic. Yes. Affordability challenges are still very much a problem. But with the supply and you look at builder confidence increasing, you look at the housing starts also this week, surprising, surpassing expectations, right? You have, you have that, these are interesting data points. Of course, of course, housing starts surpassing expectations. Uh, building, we're building single family homes like crazy. We have a near record number of multifamily apartment buildings already under construction. All of those things are good things, Chris. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I can't be more optimistic about the future. Uh, again, we did this episode recently on the podcast that says the only thing that could derail it is bad policy in, in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, fair points. And, and always good to talk with you. For Orfe Debunky, this has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of other quality podcasts at americastalking.com. Knowledge is power, and you deserve to know what happens in your state government. That's why the Center Square's reporting zeroes in on state authorities publishing stories that show where your money goes and who spends it. The Center Square gives power to the taxpayer by tracking politicians' use of the people's money and demanding transparency from state-run agencies. This is how the Center Square equips you, the American taxpayer, to hold your state government accountable. Sign up now for your state's Center Square newsletter at thecentersquare.com.